Our first speaker will be Father Chris Alar. Father Chris is with the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception from Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Most of you know uh, those wonderful priests. And uh, Father is the Father Joseph of the Order, which is the uh, priest that oversees the Association of the Marian Helpers, which is the lay apostolate of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. And so he travels all over the country speaking. I'm very grateful to him because he understands the connection between divine mercy and the flame of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Please welcome Father Chris Alar. Thank you, Tony. It's very great to be here. Um, I'm from the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Uh, some of you have been there. You may know our other priests, well, more well-known, Father Don Calloway and Father Michael Gately. Our two focuses tie in with you guys. Now, Father Mike Gately, if you haven't heard his talk, talks about the two most powerful spiritual weapons that we have today. And those two powerful spiritual weapons are Marian consecration and divine mercy. And how beautifully those are part of what you do in the flame of love. Now, the Trinity, that perfect love of the Trinity, is that mercy? Quiz. That love between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, is that mercy? No. Because mercy is when love encounters suffering it takes action to do something about it there's no suffering in the trinity mercy is loving the unlovable there's no unlovable in the trinity mercy is forgiving the unforgivable there's no unforgivable in the trinity so what mercy is is when that love of god which is so great overflows outside of itself becomes mercy when God's love overflows outside of itself it becomes mercy so what would you guess is God's first great act of mercy when I just said God's love comes outside of itself to someone else what would you guess is God's first great act of mercy creation creation is God's first great act of mercy because the greatest evil, Thomas Aquinas tells us, of all the evils in the world, and there's many to choose from, abortion and contraception and euthanasia and murder and all these things. The greatest evil, the greatest misery, Thomas Aquinas says. Anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess? What Thomas Aquinas says is the greatest misery, the greatest evil, the greatest misery that there is in the world. What is it? not to exist not to be so this is why creation is an act of mercy the greatest misery is not to exist well god put us into existence he gave us creation now this is what's important our whole faith now you guys are in a seminary okay you guys are sitting in a seminary I'm going to give you four years of seminary in four minutes. I went to Dominican House of Studies in Washington, D.C. and Holy Apostles in Cromwell, Connecticut. And you could summarize our entire four years of theology in four minutes. It's one concept, which is what the basis of Thomas Aquinas, one of the arguably the greatest saint in the church, next to Mary, of course. Our whole faith, our whole Catholic faith can be summarized by a circle a circle and he used the Latin term exitus reditus all comes from God all will return to God that's it his whole summa theologica is based on that one concept all comes from God all will return to God. That's it. Now, 
Didn't I just tell you what the first great act of mercy was? Creation all comes from God. So now picture the Trinity up here, okay? Here's the Trinity. Perfect love. They decide to share that love, overflow that love. So the first great act of mercy when the Trinity does that is creation. All comes from God. Now what member of the Trinity do we normally attribute creation to? The Father. So, here's the Trinity. The first great act of mercy by the first person of the Trinity, creation. Now, what happened? It took Adam and Eve all of 10 minutes to fumble the football. Now, I'm from Detroit. We haven't had much to cheer for with my Lions, although we're in first place right now since Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders never fumbled the football, ever. Adam and Eve fumbled the football. So, after the first great act of mercy by the first person of the Trinity, Adam and Eve fumbled the football, get broken. What would you guess is the second great act of mercy? Redemption. Now, in the second great act of mercy, the second person of the Trinity comes down and redeems us. Redemption. Now, is all of mankind redeemed, true or false? Question, all of mankind is redeemed, true or false? True. Jesus died for everybody. But will all of mankind be saved? No, because some won't choose it. We need to be sanctified before we can enter into the Trinity. So here it comes. Trinity. First person of the Trinity, God the Father, creation. We get broken. Adam and Eve sin. In the second great act of mercy, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ incarnate, the Son, the second person of the Trinity, comes down and redeems us. Now, in the third, and the final, and the greatest act of mercy, guess who? The Holy Spirit will return us back to God the Father for all eternity. But we got to be sanctified. The third and greatest act of mercy, sanctification. In the East, they call it divinization. Thomas Aquinas put it with redemption. But in essence, it's three great acts of mercy. The third great act of mercy in the East called divinization, we call it sanctification, is the power of the Holy Spirit to transform you to be prepared to enter into eternal life. This is the flame of love. Your movement is the greatest act of mercy in mankind salvation history this is it this is everything salvation history culminates in our sanctification through the power of the holy spirit utilizing the passion death and resurrection of jesus christ through his redemptive act on the cross he rose from the dead by the power of the holy spirit this third great act of mercy is what turns us and takes us back to God, the Father for all eternity. This is the flame of love. This sanctification. As Tony said, the Trinity put the love of God in the heart of Mary. What was the greatest act of mercy ever bestowed upon a creature? The Immaculate Conception. So Mary, who had this love of God, now wants to spread it through the entire world through the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. She will prepare the world for you to be ready to receive as that love of the Holy Spirit is poured back onto the world that you're ready to receive it. That you're ready to be sanctified. That's the flame of love. 